Right now, on Close Up with The Hollywood Reporter, we'll hear from eight actresses behind the year's most talked about performances. I had my first real sex scene a couple weeks ago. When you say real sex scene, you mean penetration? No. Or... <laughs> <laughs> no, yeah, like, thank you for clarifying that. <laughs> real, yeah, that's normal, right? <laughs> <laughs> I ever had children, which I don't, the first thing I'd teach a girl of mine is the word fuck off. <laughs> we did actually do a pee test. <laughs> was it real pee? <laughs> no, it wasn't real. It wasn't real. It wasn't real. <laughs> so if you were, look, you can't piss on where did you, <laughs> you can't keep doing it on. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Kate Blanchett, Carol and Truth. Kate Winslet, Steve Jobs. Helen Mirren, Woman in Gold. And Trumbo, Brie Larson, Room. Carrie Mulligan. Suffragette, Jane Fonda, Youth, Charlotte Rampling, 45 years, Jennifer Lawrence, Joy. Hello and welcome to Close Up with The Hollywood Reporter. I'm Stephen Galloway, Executive Editor of Features. I'm going to start with a simple question. <clears throat> Why do you act? That's not a simple question. <laughs> <laughs> what I said on that earth? with some irony. Mm -hmm. I have to. Sound <laughs> me. Um, I would. Is I would someone forcing you at well? <laughs> I don't know. Do you, mean very... why do, you, do you mean why do you act, or why you're an actress? Is there a difference? You know, well, yes, because the act. Why do you act? You know, well, because I'm paid to. Because I have to turn up. Because, you know, for, I like the director for many, many different reasons. But why are you an actress? Why did you choose that? I think I became an actress because I discovered the world of the imagination when I was about 14 or so. Um, I, mean, I mean, in terms of literature. Um, and the, the concept that you could engage in this amazing world of storytelling. I came to it through Shakespeare, sort of discovered Shakespeare as, as a thing of storytelling. I saw a, a production of Hamlet and I didn't know that Hamlet died in the end. <laughs> Can you imagine? You gave it away he for audience. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh, I'm yeah. so sorry. Yeah. Oh, no. Well, hopefully no one him. under the Spoiler age... Spoiler alert. <laughs> under the age of 18 is watching this. Okay. Or under the age of 10, anyway. But anyway, it, you know, Shakespeare is an amazing storyteller. So okay, the, why do you act? Or why are you an actress? I don't know. It's a bit like asking you why you love somebody. I mean, mm. you know you do. I don't want to sound too wanky, but uh, for me, it's a vocation. And in that end, I feel like I didn't choose it, it chose me. I am constantly saying, and you know, all those out of work actors will probably tell me to shut up and I'll have to commit ritual suicide, but I'm always trying to not do it, to be honest. Mm. And then, and mm. then you get a call from Martin Scorsese or Todd Haynes or whoever, <laughs> Ivo Van Hove, or, you know, and then you get drawn back, back into it. But I think it's, for me, the, the most, difficult thing is the monologue, mm. like sitting here, you know, being forced to ask, answer a question or to, you know, sit there and deliver it. I find that incredibly lonely. And for me, it's a, it's being in dialogue with people. It's weird, isn't it? Because it can be, it can be lonely, actually. I think especially when you're younger. I remember looking back on my life when I was 21, 22, and, and really remembering that feeling of, God, okay, we finished work now, and now I'm gonna go back to this funny, strange place where they've put me, which mm. is probably extremely comfortable, but, and then there's doing the work for the next day or the next week, but those moments of going, wow, I'm, I'm doing this by myself. And what is interesting out of that question is, who do you act for? Yeah. I remember being asked that when I was younger yeah. and thinking, oh, my God. I was a room, in a room with mm. lots of really scary people like Kenneth Branagh and Derek Jacobi, and everyone said, a parent, actually, every single person. And we went mm. fully round a table, and everyone said a parent, and I sat there thinking, oh, shit. Because <laughs> you mean, I, you mean I, in terms of acting as being a way of seeking approval? Because it's that whole thing, isn't it, that, well, exactly. that actors want to be liked. Exactly. And in a way, you know, I'm not, that doesn't interest me at me, all. Me no. too. And what I love about it, the theatre no, yeah. is that you, you know who you're acting for, your audience, and, and the thing. Exactly. The thing I find really hard in film is that you mm. don't, it's invisible, the audience is invisible, mm. and mm. we're sitting here talking, hoping that someone's gonna listen. What are they gonna, are they gonna watch this? Yeah. You know, there's mm. other people out there. For? My agent. <laughs> it's such a weird question. Myself, I, I, I wouldn't have, if I hadn't found it, I would have never been able to make sense of all of these bizarre things that I'm sure we all had when we were kids. Why, if I think something, do I feel it? When you're young, before you're acting, you just that just makes you feel crazy. Mm. Um, 
Well, it's, you well, know, it's, like it's, I convinced my entire bus that we were being held up for ransom because I was reading about it and was just like, it's real. Well. <laughs> um, so I, I wouldn't, I have an outlet and now I understand what it is or otherwise I would have felt mentally insane. Mm. Um, I really, I, I, I act for myself. I really, I really love it. I, mm. I don't think there's a way that we could I'm, I'm with handle you on that, these yeah. schedules and all of every, all of the work, the actual work that goes into it. If you don't really, really love it, Mm. I don't. I don't see how anyone would what be able to do it. What do you love and what do you not love about it, Jane? Well, I I didn't never wanted to be an actor. My dad was a s actor, and he never brought it joy home, so I didn't view it as something that I would want to do. But I got fired as a secretary, and um, and then I started studying. And Lee Strasberg said I was talented, so I started doing it just to earn money. And it took me a long time to to learn to love it. And what I loved was telling a story. You know, I tried to avoid making plays or films that weren't telling a story that I felt was important or wanted to, to say. And what I discovered in the process is it makes you become more empathic because you have to enter someone else's reality. Mm -hmm. And so you learn to see through many other people's eyes. And so you, I mean, I find actors tend to be very compassionate and empathic. Mm -hmm. And um, Do you all agree with that? Yes, yeah. 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 that yeah. is what yeah. acting is. They get is. such a bad rap, but actually, Actors are amazingly generous mm. and and um, supportive. Of and each there's other. nothing like it in the world. I think that mm. feeling, if you're lucky enough to get a rehearsal period on a film, mm. that for me is almost the most exciting bit because mm. to be in that space with those actors and a great director, there is literally nowhere else like it in the world. And what is totally terrifying is that unlike a musician who has a musical instrument or a painter that's got a canvas and a brush, mm. this is us. Mm. Our energy, our our soul, our spirits. And if they that if that shuts down, you know, it's it's so hard because it's so vulnerable. Mm. You're exposing everything. If Lee Strasberg hadn't liked you, would you what would you have done as the creator? I probably would have become a landscape architect. Oh wow. Yeah. What about the rest of you, Brie, what would you have done? Oh, I quit many times. It was too hard. Uh, so I went back to college a couple of times uh -huh. to be a photographer and then uh, an interior designer. And then at the real depths of it, I wanted to be an animal trainer. That was like a real low point. <laughs> it's a very low point. <laughs> For all you animal trainers that was, out there. Sorry, but that was... What triggered the lowest point? There was this role. I mean, I had been started acting when I was seven and, and I was always wrong. I would always get to the very end, but because I always wanted to become somebody else... I wasn't uh, a perfect package of one thing. I wasn't a cliche, and so it always worked against me. I wasn't pretty enough to play the popular girl. I wasn't mousy enough to be the mousy girl. So I never fit in. And so I'd get close, but they'd be like, try these sides or try these. And I wasn't a cliche, so I never got anywhere with anything, and it was really painful. And then there was um, a TV show on Showtime that Tony Collette was starring in and Steven Spielberg was the creator of, and Tony Collette was my absolute mm. uh, she's hero. Great. She's yeah, amazing she's so because wonderful. she was the first person that I really watched disappear into roles so much mm. so that I didn't even know she was in the same movies. Mm. And so when this role came and it was to play a girl who was struggling with identity and who was a little bit of everything, I thought, oh, this is, this is what I was supposed to do. Everything's leading up to this moment. Oh. I was 18, I was like, this is it. And I tested for it and didn't get it. And I was so... Oh so devastated by yeah. it that I was like, okay, I'm 18. I should probably be in college. I've been doing this for 11 years now and nothing's happened. It's a very weird thing. I mean, it's super surreal being at this table right now because my dream was when I was seven. Mm -hmm. Everybody has dreams. Mm -hmm. And there's a lot of people that dream of being an actor. And it's a very, I feel like you're constantly questioning yourself with those no's as to, is this another moment that I take and I can use this towards the craft at another time? Mm -hmm. Or am I just delusional? Yeah. Am I just completely insane? And what's interesting is how many times I did take a step back, which I, I am so grateful for, because I think that getting pulled back into it, feeling like you're getting the call, mm. is, is what drives me to act, I guess. Mm. Mm. It's not that I have to do it. It's not a job to me, and I feel more comfortable doing it, knowing that I can do something else. But I think where you're coming mm. from is, is the same place for me, too, where it has to be the thing that, like, sucks you back into the vortex because otherwise it's just, it's just too hard and mm -hmm. it's very vulnerable and it's very draining. Do you find the same thing, Carrie? Yeah, I mean, I think it's always, I think it's, I like Kate said, it's felt without sounding wanky, like vocational. And um, I remember when I did The Seagull, there's a line Nina says, um, 
I'm a proper actress now, and when I think about my vocation, I'm not afraid of life. Mm. And that's always kind of, I think, it's sort of a way of dealing with life. Um, you know, it's something that you love and something you love doing, but it also does, like Jen said, like make sense of everything for you. And, and you are empathetic because of it, and you are compassionate because of it, because you put yourself into lots of different bodies and, and never judge them for the way that they live their life. Mm. And, are you ever afraid of acting? Yeah, <laughs> all the time. What about everybody else? Oh, oh yeah. yeah, the entire of course. time. Yeah, absolutely, it never stops. And don't you hope it younger doesn't? actors say, "Are you, you know, do, do, do you, as you get older, you've done it more? You know, does the fear go? No, it gets Sorry. worse. It gets worse. Jennifer, actually. how about you? Yeah, I get scared of each before every movie, before every character, because I never feel like I have it because I don't find who they are yet when I read the script or in rehearsals or in anything, it's this very annoying thing that I've learned about myself. It's not until I'm in costume and sometimes, unfortunately, it's a week into the movie. Oh, wow. Um, oh, just a week? And then I find <laughs> <laughs> or, or I'll watch the movie and be like, oh. Um, so it, I'm always terrified before every movie because I go, I haven't found her. I don't, I don't know yet. I don't, I don't get it. How do you it. do it, actually, until you start doing it? That's the thing. Yeah. I just start talking. Exactly. Until you start I don't doing know, it, you're actually not going to be because it's works. a form of incarnation that you need, isn't it? That yeah. you don't have. It's sort of mm. like, it's just immaterial until then. Well, and it's not real yet. It's not I think real at all. I, I didn't, no. I, I rehearsal and all of that stuff. I, I like it and I'll do it, but I don't, it still doesn't yeah, feel exactly. real to me yet until it's go time. Yeah. And then you, we talk about empathy. I mean, that's exactly mm. what it is. That is mm. what acting is, is just feeling sympathy or empathy for whoever this person is. You sort of had the acting <laughs> spirit from Brie where you had success very young. Yeah. And I wonder if, did you ever think of giving up? Did you ever think I'm making a mistake with this profession? No, I didn't think I, I was making a mistake, but I did, I, I, I had a five-year plan. I was going to give it five years. And if that didn't work out, I was going to go back to Kentucky and become a nurse. Um, really? Yeah. Hmm. Um, and I still think I'm a doctor. Um, Would you have been a good nurse? I think, I think so. I really think so. <laughs> I'd be mean, a great nurse. I don't, think, I don't know if I'd let you put me under. <laughs> no, no, no. I'm not good with math. You know, okay, that sounds yeah. like your propofol. But, but yeah, you take I think my I have great medical fine. instincts. <laughs> I, what else would everybody have done if you hadn't acted? Did you ever think of other jobs? Because you started early too, Kate. Your family were actors. Well, my dad was an actor, mm. and, and my older sister is an actress. And... Um, and so I, I very much remember thinking, well, of course I'll do that as well. A little bit like, well, my sister's got a new bike, well, I'd better have a go on that bike. <laughs> it was sort of a little bit like that, really. I never, ever thought of myself as an actor who would be in films, ever. I always only thought of myself being lucky enough, maybe, to be cast in a play, perhaps, or a musical, and maybe to get the odd episode of Casualty. I mean, I really, I, I never mm. thought bigger than that. And my backup plan was probably to do something with children, to have um, either started a nursery school um, or work with underprivileged kids in some way. That was what I always, I don't know, I, I suppose I had in my back pocket. Mm. And still almost dream of maybe yeah. doing, in part, some in some way, I've always got children in my hands. <laughs> <laughs> always. I know that Kate had four children until we were just before this round table. Does, has that changed your, your view professionally, having kids? Does it make it less important it's, for you? What, the children or the job? <laughs> uh, does it make the job less important? No, I just think you have to become... I mean, you've just had a little one, sweet little yeah. bean. <laughs> um, it just makes you really economical. Mm. All of the all of the stuff that I thought that I frankly that I loved and enjoyed all of the researching around you just don't have time to no. do it. But it's also made me more fearless because I think a lot of a lot of the research that one does, the rehearsal that one does for film, is really just a process to stave off the anxiety of doing it. As you say, mm. it's that stand up nature of like, well, I'm just going to do this shit, and it's either going to be really embarrassing or it's going to be kind of in the right direction. And you just, you've got no time to be frightened in a way. Do you find yeah. it harder for women than for men in the film business? I was just I gonna say, yeah. I'd just like to add, I, I, I think it's hard for young women too. And it's very interesting, Brie saying, I wasn't pretty enough to be the pretty mm. girl and I wasn't unattractive enough to be the, the dorky girl. I'm sorry, because mm. there's lots of other different roles for wrong, young women mm. than there's the so pretty girl ways or the. To be. Do you see mm. what I mean? So but I think that's what we're I all think it's doing. Hard for young that's, girls that's, as well. that's the paving the way is like mm. finding the roles that have the complication instead of it always being like a woman is just like this. She's the one that's always got it together, or she's the she's the dedicated housewife, or she's the wild one who smokes cigarettes and sleeps mm. with anybody. Like. Mm. 
You can be both. Do like, you find it good to find good roles? Sorry, sorry. sorry. We have a technical issue. It's going to take one minute. Oh, is that that blue we, thing? I'm the only one. Oh, yeah. I saw yeah. that. Yeah. I, I, saw that. that. I, I thought that. it was a special I effect. I know. Yeah. I thought it was a cool <laughs> dramatic like, breeze tool thing. <laughs> 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 Is it hard to find good roles? Is there a shortage of good roles? In Hollywood or in real life? <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, I'm told over 40, although I, what I did when I was in my 40s is I simply made my own movies and produced my own movies because no one offered me anything. Mm. And so that worked out. But certainly, you know, after 50, it's hard for a woman, which is why television is such a welcoming thing. But why exactly. aren't people writing more of those roles? Well, so, and so, are, so, much, so much is made of, you know, good, strong roles for women. Mm. Actually, it's really interesting playing vulnerable people no, as well. But also, people best. always the say you played such a strong character. And I remember mm. someone said that to me when I played a role in Shame, and she was like a suicidal mess. Yeah. And I said, she's not strong at all. She's what incredibly weak. But yeah. strong yeah. to yes. people means mean? real. It means that you believe that that's, that's a good. person who exists mm. as yeah. opposed to some, you know, two-dimensional depiction of women, which is these mm. dorky girls. You've written about the the pay gap between men and women. I sort of find it interesting that you're taking a stance on issues like Jane. You did very bravely for much of your career. Is that going to change? And has there been a backlash to you in writing your opinion? Um, I mean, there's always a backlash in everything that you do, but it's not going to stop or change anything. It didn't change. Well, nobody would have had backlash against you. Right? <laughs> um, um, I think it's getting better. I think the road is definitely narrowing, but it's 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 not only an issue in Hollywood. You know, when you're asking about roles for men or women, men certainly have a longer shelf life. Men can play the sexy lead mm. for 20 years longer than we can. And That's idea just because it's the, mostly dudes in charge who are deciding that. Yeah. <laughs> like, no, no, you're fine. Yeah, no, chicks. men are still sexy. Mm, when, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, um, but it's, la it's lazy thinking across all industries. I mean, people, it's the, we're at the pointy end, the pub, mm. probably the most point, you know, the most public end. But what industry do, do women receive equal pay for? Equal well, work? across I mean, all I fields, women are generally paid twenty one percent less than yeah. men. What can you do to change that? Talk about it. Mm. Make people aware of it. I mean, that was all I felt like I could I could do. Mm. Um, I, I love the way the you. Uh, I love the way you wrote it. about it because you wrote about it very, very simply and personally. And, and recognize your own reaction. And I so, I so recognize that thing you said about, you know, I didn't want to be an, a, an asshole, you know, I didn't yeah. want to, you know, I wanted to be polite. We've got to stop being polite. Mm -hmm. I've always said the first, if I ever had children, which I don't, the first thing I'd teach a, child, a girl of mine is the word, fuck off. <laughs> the first Sorry, <laughs> yeah. Well, quite British, I know. <laughs> but you know, just to say it's so you you can take a stance, it's good. And 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 I've been too polite. I'd so identified with what you said, absolutely, of of wanting to be charming, wanting to be nice, wanting to be Yeah, it's so it's really know. commendable how you yeah. have taken your own situation and really mm -hmm. been extremely articulate with it. I mean, hats off to you, Jen. Oh, yeah. yeah. But but yeah. we spoke before this round table and you were saying that you didn't like it. In <laughs> <laughs> no. The British thing in me on a red carpet when a journalist there with yes. a microphone in your face, you just go, oh, I don't want to talk about money. Oh. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. Don't you that. think? Yeah, right? yeah, I, mean, yeah. It's, I, I don't know how you guys feel, hey, but well, you don't it's, have to. No, is it, a, it's, it's is it definitely money or a British... is it sexism that you don't want to talk no, about? No, money. It's absolutely yeah. the money mm. thing. Because, and, and it literally is that question, truly. I mean, it's very hard. At a round table like this a couple of weeks ago, a journalist full on said to me, do you know if you got paid less than Michael Fassbender? I never want to be asked that question. I yeah. never want to have to answer it. And that side of it, I do find vulgar. Because what it does is mm. it lifts the lid and suddenly journalists are asking mm -hmm. questions that are really uncomfortable mm -hmm. to answer. Um, and, and so that's, yeah, so for me, for me I, and it is a British thing, you know, we are taught not to talk about money with your friends, let alone publicly. Yeah. So that's why I've had a little bit of a hard time with it, just because it's meant that the questioning has actually become really yeah. aggressive. But it's also about but, context. I mean, mm. viewers are talking before just about them, the proliferation of outlets that one has to, you know, when you're proud of a film, mm. you want to talk about it, you want, you want it to reach an audience, but there's so much stuff. And that so, somehow a, a, a comment that one makes mm. in a very specific context about a very specific subject is taken completely out mm -hmm. of context. And then in, in the connected, it's, I mean, it must happen to journalists how, all how the time, the third paragraph life? goes missing. I've, I've always just been really private. I don't mind being at home. I don't like big... 
I, I was kind of made for this life. I don't know if you guys feel that way. Like, I just, I like being home. I have all my same friends. I. When you say home, you mean Kentucky or? No, I don't know. A Where house, home wherever home I'm that? living. <laughs> <laughs> a house. Um, I don't know. I just am private. I just don't really, mm. I don't really go out a lot. Several of you live <laughs> away <sounds> from <laughs> the epicenter of Hollywood. Is that easier or harder? Charlotte, you live in Paris. Yeah, living away from the epicenter. Yes. Has that hurt your career or? I don't know. <laughs> Doesn't I think like you're it. doing fine. <laughs> 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 you know, you make choices. You make life choices. You know, if if Jennifer wants to sort of be private in her houses, I like to be private in mine. We all we all we all protect. We all we can all protect our lives because if we mm. don't protect our, our our private lives. Then we're not actually going to be able to get out there and do what we do, because as we've said before, yeah. we are so vulnerable out there. We need to be vulnerable. That is part of the game. That is the price we pay, and we go out and we do it. Mm -hmm. Whatever the consequences, we do it. So we have to have somewhere to come back mm -hmm. to, to be mm -hmm. safe, and to be literally just sort of go like that with, with <laughs> our kids. It's great if we can have our kids to do it. We, mm -hmm. they, bring us, they bring us the reality that we need, that we... And it, you have don't, you gotten you don't braver, because be. you've been... You're, you're, have you always been as brave an actor as you as you have been lately? That's I don't a great think question. I'm particularly brave, Jane. Oh my God. Be said, but I don't think I'm particularly brave. What, what is the brave? I think actress? being an actor is being brave, actually. You know, yeah, just what, getting what out there and doing actress? what we what do is brave. What is brave for an actress? Is just putting yourself in a situation that is so vulnerable. I mean. When Kate was in, what's the name of the movie that you did in, with the Harvey? Holy and she smoke. walks out, it's <laughs> nighttime, and she walks out of this building stark naked and urinates on herself. <laughs> <laughs> You know, <laughs> that's one of brave. Why <laughs> <laughs> she likes to remind you? <laughs> was it real pee? No, it wasn't. It was real. How? <laughs> so if you were look, not you can't this out, where did you? Where did you put it? How did it happen? Did you? Well, you, can't, you can't keep doing it on. You yeah, can't exactly. yeah. Yeah. <laughs> No, we do, uh, but no, we did actually do a pee test because, of course, I did want to actually do the pissing part if I could, but you know, <laughs> with when you, it's so going to be a lot of no. When you stand up and pee, it doesn't go in a nice stream right down the centre, which is what they wanted. It just re it just races for sanctuary down one side of your leg. Yeah. So actually, that didn't work when we did the pee test, and I really did <laughs> pee down my leg. So what we did was we hung <laughs> we hung a bag of saline drip fluid and dyed it slightly yellow. It was tied to the back of my hair on a small thread, and it just sat happily in the base wow. of my back. And then there was a little tube, which was wedged. A certain and did someone activate wow. it remotely? And someone activated it. Yeah. Did you wedge it? Or Who did had that? Was that credited? I wedged it, but I had to say, <laughs> <say, laughs> okay. I wedged it, but I had to say, okay. Wedge, check, check. <laughs> oh, oh. Is there anything you the wouldn't, things we is do. Is there anything you wouldn't do as an actress? That's more brave, I think, than yeah. peeing on yourself. <laughs> 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 it was actually Who put the tube scary. in its place? <laughs> it's pretty scary, man. But he's asking if there's anything is more. Is there anything you would not do I mean, as after having done that, I don't think, you know, you well, would there are things. See, to me, that's not brave. That, that, that's just kind of going, oh, fuck it, you know, mm. get on with it, because you kind of have to. I mean, the things that I, I personally feel I wouldn't do is I wouldn't be a part of anything that had... Um, uh, acts of violence towards children. That's something I wouldn't do. Um, mm. I, I don't think I'd. I don't think I'd also do a horror film either. Mm. I don't know why that just doesn't oh, sit well films. on my soul. Oh. Do you? I love them. Do you find do them you? funny? <laughs> no, I don't find them funny. I find no, them scary. I do you? <laughs> But it's, I think it, the thing is those, gratu yeah. those gratuitous moments are when you feel like, what is this adding to the conversation? Mm. Or why is, this, why is this woman getting beaten up for no reason? Or is, there, mm. is this going to pay off? Or yeah. is there anything degrading? Or, yeah. You know, there's plenty of girlfriend roles out there. But sometimes you read those roles, and I've certainly, I've, they've come my way, and, I, and many people have turned them down. You think, oh, maybe I could do something with this. Mm. And it's interesting when you get those roles, which seem like nothing on the page, mm. and you kind of subvert them, mm. and you make them into something. Have you said no to doing something? on screen? Said no to doing something on screen. I don't think so. I mean, I've skinned a squirrel. <laughs> if I was going to say no. Not a real squirrel. I would, uh, no, not a, of course it was a real squirrel. Uh, I didn't kill it, but mm. anyway, um, no, not yet. I would. What's been your toughest moment as an actress? Um, I had my first real sex scene a couple weeks ago, and it was really bizarre. It oh. was really weird. I, when you say real sex scene, you mean 
penetration. No. Or, <laughs> no. Yeah. Like, thank you for clarifying that. Yeah. Yeah. Real. Yeah. That's normal, right? Um, yeah. It was. It was weird. It was. Um, and everything was done right. It wasn't anybody's fault. Nobody did anything mm-hmm. wrong. It's just a bizarre experience. How do you um, prepare for that? You drink. Oh, I, got really, yeah. I got really, really drunk. But then that led to more anxiety when I got home because I was like, what have I done? <laughs> I, have, I, I, don't, I don't know. And, and he was married and it was going to be my first time even like kissing a married man. And like guilt is like the worst feeling in your stomach. And I knew it was my job, but I couldn't tell my stomach. That, so it, I called my mom. I was like, will you just tell me it's okay? <laughs> um, it was just very vulnerable. And... Um, and you never, you don't know what's too much, and you don't, you don't want to do it real. You mm. want everything to be real, but then you're like, and did you have, dir- did you too... have direction? Yeah, I was had direction. It fun? I don't. It Which was, picture was it? Some of it was fun. Yeah. But it was mostly just which picture? Which uh, I'm doing a movie called Passengers right now. Yeah. So that was the first, That was the most vulnerable I've ever I've ever been. Carrie, what about you? What's your toughest moment been? I don't know. It's sort of weird. Like there's always the things that you think are going to be tough. Like you know, I've been nude once, and I was like, oh, that's going to be a nightmare. And actually, that was kind of fine. You know, it's like going to fuck it. Oh, and now I'm naked, and everyone else isn't. This is hilarious. Um, but it's never a single thing. It's more like a whole. You know, it's a whole character. It's like trying to. It's the toughest thing is trying to to sell a whole story. You know, when you're film. I mean, I find film really difficult and trying to make it feel like a consistent character. When was you're suffrage a, diff- a difficult role to play? Yeah, suffragette was difficult because you know she was she was an ordinary woman, a completely ordinary woman, and um, and then by the end she's almost radicalized and you know, trying to make her a consistent person, I guess. that It doesn't seem like one person at the beginning of the story and then suddenly she's just transformed and now she's a really brave woman, you know. Um, and there was lots of kind of tricky stuff in it. But, you know, all the scenes that you always think are really hard are the reasons that you take the jobs. We burn things because war's the only language men listen to. Because you've beaten us and betrayed us and there's nothing else left. And there's nothing left but to stop you. What are you going to do? Lock us all up. We're in every home. We're half the human race. You can't stop us all. You might lose your life before this is over. And we will win. You had one scene with Meryl Streep. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. What did you talk about off camera? Well, she, they didn't have any shoes in her size, so she brought her out of Africa shoes. So we were just like drilling her <laughs> <laughs> um, for a long time. Yeah, it's fun. Did she give you any advice? No, I mean, I find people like, you know, people don't, I'm surrounded by, you know, incredible actresses that I would look to, but people don't bestow advice. They just lead by example. And she leads by example. You know, I was wondering when you did Room, you have a woman trapped in a sort of dungeon-like setting, I mean, it's outdoors. Did you speak to any women who'd been through that in real life that helped you play that part? You know, I'm a big believer in privacy and I didn't feel yeah. like it was my place to invade oh. their space and ask them about that because ultimately what the story is is, is universal and I didn't want to get into some sort of invasive crime tale. Do you remember how Alice wasn't always in Wonderland? She fell down, 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 deep in a hole. Right, well, I wasn't always in room. I'm like Alice. I was a little girl named Joy. Nah. And and I lived in a house with my mom and my dad. You would call them grandma and grandpa. What house? A house. It was in the world. And there was a backyard, and we had a hammock. We would swing in the hammock, and we would eat ice cream. A TV house? No, Jack, a real house, not TV. Are you even listening to me? I had been given some videos of the very rare times that these girls had done public interviews and they just broke my heart and made me so angry. Mm-hmm. And that was sort of the fuel for, for really wanting to put a lot into that interview scene that's at the end of the movie because I wanted to expose that sense of the way that we are exploiting um, someone else's tragedy and pain <coughs> and the way that we feel entitled to know more um, mm. for our own sort of, it's like the staring at a car crash thing. What was really interesting, and it's interesting you're saying that about the film, is that you think, I have to really prepare myself before I watch this. I don't know how I'm going to deal with it as an audience member. But the first third's in the room. Mm-hmm. And then one of the most horrifying moments is that interview when you realise mm. she's been through such mm-hmm. an, an, an you know, unimaginable trauma and now she's going to have to pay for her legal bills by doing this interview. And the blankness... That with which you played that moment was for me, in way, 
equally as horrifying as the trauma that she went through in the in the room. Yeah, I wanted that to also really be powerful. the scariest she ever looked. You see her with no makeup and like not how you normally see an actress in a film, just like raw skin, clogged pores. I didn't wash my face for a long time to just uh-huh. get it all gross. And at first you're sort of like, oh God, and then you adjust to it. And then by the time she's got makeup on, you're like, why does anyone put makeup on ever? It's the most bizarre mm-hmm. thing to me. Mm-hmm. I think that's when she looks the most horrific. It's the ugliest she ever is. And you would think it would be perhaps in the trauma or when she has just nothing and it's so bare. But in fact, I think it's that that stripped downness and the flaw of it that I think that we love so much. And really, I get sort of, I get off on it when I watch it. I was interested when you did Truth that you're playing real life character and the version of the Dan Rather story. There's many Rather, versions depending right. on who you speak to. So when you take on a film like that, do you do inv- any investigating and say, okay, do you feel you have to endorse that film's version of the truth? It's a particular moment in time and someone's viewpoint has to take you through the story. And um, it's, it's really about the unhealthy crucible between, you know, um, our politicians, our, you know, the centralised media ownership and, um, you know, the, and the readership. And so that was the bit that interested me. Of course, I met Mary and I talked to her at, at length and she's a fascinating, compelling person, but, the, but it was about her and freefall. Andrew asked you to apologize? He didn't ask. Dan, that's surrender. Ever since you know. Burkett changed his story, Andrew feels that CBS can't afford the risk to his reputation. Oh, God, he knew. Even before we went down there, he just wanted to get Burkett on tape. Mary, you gotta promise me something. Stop worrying about me. No, well, that's not gonna happen. A film is not a documentary. You know, it's about, the film's about the demise of investigative journalism. So if the film inspires people to go and read Mary's memoir, or frankly, remember that moment in time, which, which we've all forgotten. We've, we've got such short-term memories. And that's what's wonderful about film is that I think that's a real provocation for people. Mm. I'd never, ever see film as being an absolute version of the truth. Mm. There's even by the sin of omission, you're guiding yeah. people. But it's if it inspires people to go back and think about Viacom. Did meeting her um, lead you to change the performance? At what, what point did you meet her? I was on stage in New York and and, um, and she came up to see the show and, and we met and, and then we Skyped throughout the course of the, the, the huh. film. But at a certain point, I, I had to disconnect and just play yeah. the... Because you are playing a character. I mean, you were saying that the other day, Helen, is that you... You, you, you have all these, the, the people that we, if you're playing a real life character or a fictional character, they're far more interesting than, you know, the time you have to, to put all, so you try and put as much detail in as and possible. And this film came out quite quickly, didn't it? Yeah. Um, that's right, because you've also played real life characters. Is it different when you play a real life, I don't know if the woman you played was still alive when you did No, the film. she had passed away actually by the time we got to make her story, which is very sad, she never got to see that. Mm. Yes, of course it's different because you have a responsibility to kind of look like them and sound like them and maybe walk like them and use your hands like them. My aunt, Adele. My uncle commissioned Gustav Klimt to paint her. That's quite a painting. It's magnificent. She was taken off the walls of our home by the Nazis. And since then, she's been hanging in the Belvedere Gallery in Vienna. And now you'd like to be reunited. Wouldn't that be lovely? Make you a rich woman, I'm sure. Do you think that's what this is about? But the essential journey is exactly the same, really, as with a fictional character, Mm. which is a a journey of imagination, Mm. I guess, and and the journey of telling a story. The great thing about playing a real-life character is you don't have to make up all that backstory stuff. Truth is always so much more interesting than fiction, isn't it? Any... I always think, you know, when I'm, I'm in, a, in a bus, I do take the bus, <laughs> and I look at people in London, the, in London yeah, or, or uh, not here, but in London, yeah. And, and I look at every single person in a bus queue, and I, every single one of you has a, the story of a movie in you. Mm. Every single one of you, every single person on this planet has the most amazing, incredible story um, behind them. Do you, do, but, you, do you um, look at other films and think, okay, I'm going to draw from this performance when you do your own? I do, yeah. Huh. I take from people all the time. <laughs> Can you tell us an example? No, not really. I, but it's the same, that's what we do, or what I do with, with people. You just watch them, you know. I, I didn't, um, 
never go to like acting classes or anything. You you can just watch people. Um, and I so was, I was I think watched... on screen, babies and animals are my inspiration. <laughs> really, yeah. they're free. They are, well, because they of are their so brilliant. They are so alive and there, mm. and and not messed up in their heads the way I am. You know, <laughs> um, are you? Yes, all the time on the set. Oh God, absolutely. You know, like ugh, and, do you all feel oh, like my that hair's you're wrong and whatever? That, that. yeah. Yeah. yeah, but that's <laughs> yeah. part of the, that's part of it. Yeah, and all you need is one moment of flow, and then you're back and you're addicted. And yeah. so, yes. you know, yeah. see, well, it could all be like that, but it quite, I can't. It's mm. monkey yeah. bars. You know, you're constantly reaching for that, that you know, that moment. It's like the, one of my favorite moments is on stage when you see a dancer leap, mm. and you think they're they're gonna they're flying, and then <laughs> yeah. they fall. And, yeah. and, you know, mm -hmm. but it's that moment of suspension that you mm. you look look for, and sometimes you get it, and sometimes you don't. I'm always inspired, uh, quite literally, by actresses who are older than me. I mean, really, truly I am, because I know that that person has lived so much more life than mm. I have. And to bring that amount of history to the screen through a character, it does take, it, it, it takes energy, takes, I, th I think, probably more energy than when you're younger. When you're younger, you've only lived a certain amount of life and you have your stuff mm. in your little emotional toolbox. But as you get older, I mean, I know this having had children and Kerry, you'll know this, like the next role you play, I'm so excited for you <laughs> because you'll go, oh, wow, there's a whole other toolbox <laughs> yeah. that I didn't know yeah. I had been given. But I do find that with, I mean, your performance I, in... Well, in 45 in, in, years, oh, did you God, find Charlotte, that? I mean, Charlotte, is it, is it, was it harder playing that than it would have been when you were in your 20s? It would have had to have been called 10 years. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Not harder, but it was supercharged. What I want now is for you to just come to the party tomorrow. Of course, I'm going to come. And I really need you to want to be there. Yes, I do want to be there. Because it's one thing, me knowing I haven't been enough for you. It's something altogether different that everyone else feels it too. Boy, you, you really believe you haven't been enough for me? No, I think I was enough for you. I'm just not sure you do. Because what Kate says, you become super, more and more charged with, with your life, not, not only with your life, but with the life that you're observing, because we're observing also all, lives all the time, mm. um, but with the life that we are performing. Mm. Mm. So we have a, we have a, you know, a very big toolbox. Mm. And I, I was like you, Kate, when I, when I was younger, I, I was actually looking forward to getting older, to have mm. More, mm. Yeah. more of it, mm. more insight, more understanding, maybe some understanding, maybe some mm. m obviously much more experiences, but all that, all that, this, could, that this could give me the food for, the, for future performances. Mm. Do you feel you have more understanding now? Yes, I do. I'm much, I'm much more tolerant with others and with myself, which means that we ha I have got to a certain understanding because it's, I'm not in rebellion all the time. I'm not fighting for, I'm not angry so much. I'm mm. not, all the things that certainly, that, but they're useful, all those things when we're younger, all those mm. feelings. They're really useful because they fire us. They, they lead us on as long as they don't get out of control and then they're not unlivable, but they're, mm. but they're useful mm. feelings, those very strong, strong feelings that mm. we have. Mm. Jane, do you agree with that? You had very strong feelings as a young woman. Have they mellowed or are they still strong? They're still strong, but they're tempered in a way. I mean, they're strong to where they keep me up at night, but it has nothing to do with acting. I mean, I feel very lucky because I've always had things in my life that were as important to me as acting. In fact, I left acting for 15 years. Mm -hmm. And the fact that I got to come back is kind of an ama amazing. I feel very blessed. But I, I just think it's really nice to have another life. For me, it was activism. Mm -hmm. What keeps you awake at night, then, if it's not? Melting ice. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. Yes. Uh, what just happened in France. Mm. Yeah. Yes. Um, what's happening in the world. I mean, I, mm. not two hours go by that I don't think, I'm here, I'm so privileged, I'm so lucky to be with these people and we're talking about this, and the world is falling apart. Yeah. Mm. And I don't know if we can do anything about it in time. And that can keep me up at night. I took too much for granted when I, when I was younger. You know, I didn't really want to be an actor. I didn't really love it. And so I just, I made a lot of mistakes and everything. Oddly enough, when I came back after being gone for 15 years and came back in my 60s, I care much more about it now. I feel like a complete novice. Huh. God, how lovely. It's much more exciting. You see, you see. <laughs> what you a see, fantastic feeling. It's yeah. Is it harder to do? You did, you did a very 
brief role in youth, but a very defined character. Is it harder when you do something brief like that than when you do a long part? And how much do you think in preparing for it? Um, sometimes I prepare a lot and sometimes I don't. This particular was, Al Pacino said there's this role that was like written for you, but another actor was cast in it. So when the other actor dropped out, I hadn't even read the script, but I said to my agent, go after it for me. And I accepted it because I wanted to work with Paolo Sorrentino. Yes. Because I thought, you know, I didn't get to work with Fellini, you mm. know, or Antonioni. Yes. And so this is a real opportunity to work with somebody who's very special, mm. very different. And I love Il Devo and The Great Beauty. He won an Academy Award mm -hmm. for The Great Beauty. So when I read the scene, finally, I thought, wow, this is great. How many years have we known each other, Mick? Jesus, you put me on the spot. Let me count. 53 years. How many films have we done together? Nine, 10. 11. So after 53 years of friendship and 11 films together, you don't think I'm gonna to start to bullshit you now, do you, you of all people? No, I don't. I wouldn't deserve that. That's right, you don't deserve it. It's sometimes very difficult. You know, when you're a guest star in a TV series coming in, it's very, very hard because everybody has their rhythm and, the, you know, and you're just kind of coming in. But a scene like, like Sorrentino gave, gave me in youth, um, it's so complete unto itself mm -hmm. and it's so specific mm -hmm. that it was pretty easy. Have you seen the film? I've seen it three times. Do you like watching yourself? No, uh, no, uh, no. <laughs> Although no. I do. I mean, I watch dailies. You how do. Many, do how, how many yeah. of you watch mm -hmm. watch dailies? Dailies. That's oh, almost yeah. an old fashioned yeah, sort of. Yeah. <laughs> people have dailies anymore. <laughs> Name. Do you like to watch yourself? They don't play back. No. Play back. Uh -uh. Right? Is that what you mean? Do you like watch, in the moment, you, like you can get it on DVDs. Um, do you watch? I don't like to watch myself, but if if I'm mm. keep keep getting a direction and I'm not doing it, mm. or if if we're just not communicating, then I'll I'll just say, let me watch it. And then when I watch it, then I'm like, oh, okay, I know what I right. have to do. Mm. Mm. Yeah, I learn so much by mm. watching. Yeah, I do too. I th I know it's hard to do it, but I think it's really important to actually go back and watch yourself. Yeah. Like, I find it easier when result. you're watching it in the moment versus after, because in the moment I feel like I'm trying to fix something. Yeah. Mm. So I'm in the process of it, and so I don't even. And there's no real judgment of myself or what the product is. I'm just going like, yeah, well, okay, I have to I get that. that. Yeah. I got to get that thing that I really need to get across there. But afterwards, like the first time, I can't watch anything. You can't oh, watch yeah. I don't ever watch a single no, I playback. I Not even playback. Yeah. I can watch it, but I have to playback. put my fingers in my ears. I have to go. Oh, yeah, yeah, the yeah, voice. Yeah, the yeah, voice. I can't. I can't yeah, yeah, the voice my, yeah. is the worst. No. Yeah, yeah, I can stare at my double yeah. chin all I want, yeah. but hearing <laughs> this homogenous <laughs> like, yeah. voice, you can't even tell. I really have to turn the sound down. Or even when sound is the sound department are playing something back to check it. I hear your own voice coming. People are, you know, mucking around getting a cup of tea, and the whole performance is like, oh, I'll switch it up. Uh, yeah, I find that very bizarre. Very I remember I produced feeling. on Golden Pond and I was curious that Catherine Hepper never went to Daly's um, because she's a complete, she was a complete control freak. Yeah. And I know that she used to. And I said, how come you're not coming to Daly's, Miss Hepper? And she said, a point came with Lion in Winter where all I could see were the wrinkles. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and I realized that I had lost the ability to see what was right for the movie, and I've never gone to daily since. Mm -hmm. Wow, that's great. Yeah, Which I think was interesting. Mm -hmm. But I agree with you. It's much easier to do it at the time than seeing it afterwards. That, that's really hard. How many times have you seen Room? I've seen it four, and I want to see it more, but I've gotten... Why? It, because it, it means so much more than my little brain can comprehend when I was oh, making it. Oh, and you only see it really from... Like, I lived it through Ma. So now I can see it as a bigger picture. It's like the more I watch it, it feels like my view gets bigger and I see it. I mean, the first time I watched it, I felt nothing. I just, I just felt so fascinated by it. It's like a series of images of your life from a year before. We're like, oh, that's what the back of my head looks like. Okay. Do you learn from watching yourself? No, I've never learned anything from myself. Have you? <laughs> but I'll, I'll learn, like, kind of like probably like an athlete watches playback. I'll see myself, yeah. I'll either see a habit and see myself doing something and yeah. go, I don't want to do mm. that, mm. or that looks fake, or don't do that, or you've done that too much. I, I can critique it. But don't it. you find that sometimes um, you get actors who, who, who find ticks or management that they like and they start reusing those? Yes. Oh, Ooh, really? I, well, I, I and that becomes their career. That. Right. That becomes how do you, who they I are. I try to keep my eye and on repeating something. How do you not do that? 
Well, each uh, person is a new person. Each I mean, time do you're doing it, kind of re re reuse, reuse old new, tricks, which, oh. can, which could become your sort of you sweet, you sweet identity. identity. Yeah, it becomes you your sweet identity. You work with him, David O'Russell on Joy. <laughs> is it helpful to work with the same people over and over? Incredibly. Mm. We have such a shorthand. I actually had to apologize to this director of passengers because I kept interrupting him, and I didn't even wasn't even meaning to be rude. But David can start to talk, and I know exactly what he's going to. Say, oh. you said to me that David Selznick, the son of immigrants, married Jennifer Jones, an all-American girl from Oklahoma, because in America, all races and all classes can meet and make whatever opportunities they can, and that is what you feel when you reach into people's homes with what you sell. You said that. We have such a shorthand and, and it's so honest because we don't have to go through the getting to know each other period mm -hmm. or mm -hmm. being yeah, polite to each other. Really it, it's, just, it's just real and mm -hmm. immediate. Um, it's mm -hmm. incredibly, I want to work with him um, until one of us dies. And you probably will, damn it. <laughs> <laughs> He's very good. So, what makes a great director? Communication. Confidence. Mm -hmm. Someone who Freedom. listens. Someone I think a good parent. parent. Yeah. Like, parent. like what makes a good dad. Which is? Where you feel like you can really just like go for it and do the big swing, but if you strike out, they're like, it's all right, just try it again. Yeah. Mm -hmm. The sense for me is that if I can feel like I can fail and continually fail, and there's no sense of judgment, because I do think that's the awkward thing about it. I do. F I felt for so long that it was this awkward handshake. It was like, oh, okay, director, I will perform for you. And the director's like, okay, yes, and I will support that and also judge you at the monitor. But then as I got older, I went, oh, actually, that's just my dad issues talking. Hmm. This is actually more of a symbiotic relationship. And in fact, hmm. if I can't take these giant leaps, and I did it, I used to say it to Lenny on Room all the time. Anytime I had to do a big, huge scene, I'd be like, it's going to be bad. I just I felt the need to just <laughs> yeah. be like, it's going to be bad. Yeah. I'll just like completely blow it out of the water. It'll probably mm. be way too much, but at least I did it, and then I got the badness mm. out. Mm. No, but it's also, by saying that, it's like you're creating the space where you can say, I might fuck up here, but if I fuck up, I might discover something, which mm. we yeah, can exactly. use. And so you have to yeah. put yourself, the, the, the most difficult thing, it's first day of school, isn't it? Is yeah. You have to yeah. embarrass yourself yeah. in front of everybody because <laughs> yeah. in doing that, you go, okay, now we can all start. Mm -hmm. Anything yeah. can happen. That's yeah. why I have trouble yeah. with yeah. rehearsal. I find yeah, rehearsals like true. embarrassing. I'm like, it's, it's, it's oh, hard. I don't like acting unnecessarily. It, it embarrasses me. I yeah, round I table read I find excruciating. Oh, excruciating. Uh, terrible. Um, yeah. yeah. Have you acted on stage? Half acting. No, I never have. Would you? I, I, I would. I don't know. I don't know anything about it. I'm scared of it. I don't know if it's a different animal. I don't know if it's the same it animal. I don't know. Kate, is it? You know what? You're really, I mean, I, I've just carried into film as well. It's an ensemble effort. Mm. And, you know, when you're very, the, the audience gives you so much. The other actors give you so much. Both mediums feed each other. I know more now how to use a, a wide shot Yes. Because, of yeah. because of working theater, on the, yeah, in a frame in the stage. And I know much better how to be present and immediate and intimate with a six or, you know, a thousand seat house because mm. of doing a close up. Mm. They do they do kind of it's not not much you so, on screen. So you are it's your eyes and it's your soul. Everything I do is that, do that. Real. <laughs> 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 oh, you did that great. Yeah, yeah that's my Scary dad. great. <laughs> You've, you've played the same role, the Queen, on stage and on film. How is it different? You have to talk louder, basically. <laughs> that's <one. laughs> yeah, that's what I was... I wish you could have microphones on the stage. This is, you know, a lot of stage actors, <coughs> that's absolutely anathema to say that, but shouting in the dark, Ma Michael Campbell mm. called it. Yes. Um, you know, it's much more than that. It's absolutely what Kate says. Uh, um, uh, sorry, yes, Kate says it's... It's the, it, the great thing is to be able to use your whole body and express through the whole of your body as, as much as through this mm -hmm. kind of thing. Yeah. Um, as she says, it's mm. like a long shot, really, basically. I mean, fil fil um, film acting, it, it is... I did a lot of theatre when I was much younger, like until I was sort of 15, 16. <clears throat> and then when I, when I did a film when I was 17, I remember having to be helped a lot to just bring my energy back mm. into myself mm. because I wasn't used to not saying things really, really loudly. I wasn't used to not whispering like that, mm. you know. <laughs> <laughs> to be able to actually really whisper 
Yeah. Mm. God, I couldn't believe that was yeah, such so a luxury so to great. me. And it still is such a luxury to yeah. be able mm. to do nothing and know that the nothing that you're doing, which is mm. so important in that moment of nothingness, is actually going to be picked up by yeah. a camera. Mm. And that is different on, on, on stage. If you body. played yeah. your Steve Jobs role on stage, the film has a play-like quality. Mm. How would you play the role differently? Louder. <laughs> <laughs> I shout, shout it out. But, it's, um, but it must have been so great to do those continuous, oh, long God, I can't, I can't tell you. I mean, I really, you know, I wanted, I wanted to be a part of this film because I knew it was going to be a very, very unique experience. And it absolutely was because of the construction of it. It's written, as you say, in three acts. And so the only way to do that was to fully rehearse it like a play and absolutely learn it as such. I love you, Steve. You know how much. I love that you don't care how much money a person makes. You care what they make. But what you make isn't supposed to be the best part of you. So when you're a father, that's what's supposed to be the best part of you. And it's caused me two decades of agony, Steve, that it is for you. The worst. And we wouldn't have been able to retain that dialogue, I don't think, and to feel free with it if we hadn't have drummed it mm. in and really drilled mm -hmm. it in the way that we did in rehearsal. We had 10 full days of rehearsal for each act mm. and then wow. we would stop rehearsing and go and shoot it. And then production would stop and we'd go back into a rehearsal room. Wow. And do oh, so that, that is really that. close yeah. to really theatre. That's very unusual. It like, was so unusual. Very unusual. Like Sidney Lumet used to do that. Yeah, Sidney Lumet, Sydney did, Lumet really. Absolutely. did exactly mm. that. Really, You it was... rehearsed it like a play, you mm. ran it, mm. and then you went and shot it. I'd only done it once before mm. with uh, on something that I did with Roman Polanski, but this was this was completely different because it did call for everybody to be in the room. Mm. And it was that great thing of just, wow, you can turn to another actor who's got three lines in act one and say, that was shit, wasn't it, the way we just did it? Okay, yeah, confirmed, it doesn't work like that. Okay, so let's make another mistake. And then you get all <coughs> the mistakes out the way. And that was, it was just great. Because by the time we walked onto the set, we were already on performance 70. We weren't mm. on mm. day one wow. or day two. Mm. I mean, and that was, an ex that was a real lesson, actually. Mm. Because you're right about the thing in the rehearsal room of being so awkward on film. It's so uncomfortable and you feel all a bit silly for the first at least mm. three days. But actually, the rehearsal was so beneficial that it's really made me rethink you know, what happens next, you know, saying to a director or producer, look, please, could we rehearse and have mm. everybody in the room as much as possible? Mm. Because it honestly made a huge difference just to how included everyone felt and mm. how confident everyone mm. was. We were given, fully given the roles to play and allowed to really play with them. <coughs> and and that, was, that was an amazing experience to have that. I wonder if, you know, we, we take for granted that there's a certain way that one is meant to make a film. You start on day one and you finish on day 30 or whatever, depending how much CGI there is. But I wonder <laughs> if you did shoot a bit, mm. rethink, go back, I wonder if there'd be more female directors. Because I, mm, I think a lot, of, a lot of women, you think, you know, with the pre-production, the shooting, the post-production, and the endless amount of publicity, that's kind of two years of your life. Mm -hmm. And that I think a lot of women, particularly women with, with mm. families, then think, how am I going to manage this? But Do you think Carol should have been them, directed by women? I think working with Todd's like a girlfriend more than yeah, anyone, absolutely, Kate, more complete, than anyone yeah, totally. that I've ever met. He <laughs> has his his sense of, and I, I feel I really connected with him in that way. Is that I don't your, people's gender is not my first point of engagement mm. with mm. them, and it's not with Todd. And if you look at all the great roles that women have played, I mean, he asked me to play Bob Dylan for fuck's sake. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> you know, yeah, not, so, so no, I mean, I felt that he and Rooney and I were absolutely together, like you were saying, without that sense of judgment, completely mm. inside, alongside. And we Why had a tiny bit of Why are there not more rehearsal. female directors? What can be done to change this? Because it hasn't changed in decades. I think what Kate's just saying actually is, I mean, I, it actually ha literally hadn't occurred to me because we are mm. all being asked this question mm. a lot at the moment. Mm. Um, and I think you're right, Kate. It is so much to do with the fact that most of us do have families and, you know, the commitment for a director on a film is a whole year, if not more. But I can ask for this an because I don't have children. And what is the difference between, uh, you know, men who direct have 
families too. I think there's still an expectation yeah. that someone's going to be keeping the home fires burning. Yeah, I think, right. you know, it's like look at any business executive, business hours, even though work hours should be flexible because yeah. of the, you know, the internet, mm. it's it's not based around school pickup time. So you, exactly. you're forced to make a choice. Yeah, yeah. and my and husband I, is a very you know, present husband actually yeah. as well. And that has made just actually going to work feel easier. I don't feel guilty. You know, mm. I'm sure we all go together and all that jazz, but the hours are what we know the hours are. And I definitely feel less guilt because I know he's there doing yeah. breakfast, lunch and supper if I'm not there for those three meals. But I think that's really true, Kate, that, mm. that for, fe I mean, I just work with an Australian director, Jocelyn Morehouse, mm. Mm. and she has four children. She's married to PJ Hogan. And two of her children are autistic. Mm. And for sure, it's much <coughs> harder for her. But definitely, I mean, she hasn't directed that many films. And I, mm. uh, and it is because of her family and wanting to absolutely uh, do you, be Do you there. worry about that? Do you think, okay, because you're working all the time now, do you think at some point I'm going to take a break to have a family or... or, or do you not look ahead like that? I don't look ahead. Like I mean, I'm sure, uh, I mean, hopefully I will. I do want to be mm -hmm. a mother. But it's not, I don't need to think about it right now. I just, I really only think about work. Mm. Well, wow. good or bad. But it's not, it's not it's that you have to have I, a family. I, I mean, I only, I only mentioned it because I think there could be a creative possibility mm in there, but also maybe a shift in the, the demographic of mm. directing fraternity. But girls, what do we do about well, it? Well, what no, do we actually I was just thinking that yeah. it's interesting that there's like the, so many different sides of this that, that women get frustrated that, you know, we don't, get, we don't get paid enough and then the Republicans or the CEOs that are men say, well, it's because women take off time for maternity leave or because of women. So it's interesting to hear- Because it's our fault. A woman. Obviously. Yeah. From, but a woman say, well, well yeah because we, we are mothers, and it mm -hmm. is different. Mm -hmm. We're continuing the human race for you. You're welcome. Mm -hmm. It is. <laughs> <laughs> Somebody but, does. But, you, but yeah. you physically can't do what your husband is doing right now. You are physically feeding your baby with your mm. body, and your husband can't do that. Yeah. I mean, one of the things is that more women have to be in charge of studios so that they can green light films with women. But you know? they were in to charge. Some extent, you know, it does. A few said there yeah. were three or four women running the studios. I think women can be just the sexist. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Women can be misogynistic too. More so, they have more freedom well, it's to do fine. it. It's mm. economic, isn't it? You just, the, the economics have to change. Well, why would people um, have confidence in a female director when there are so few? What is it, like 3% mm -hmm. or, or something? Two, yeah, I don't, less. It, less. Between 1 and 11. Um, think, every year. So there's not going to be a lot of confidence in a female director. And then that has to filter into maybe we don't have confidence in ourselves because there's so little confidence. Would you ever direct? I, I would love to direct. Huh. But I love writing right now because I can write and What act, advice and can you give for us to direct her? You're looking at me. <laughs> You've directed a lot. I mean, I, I think, um, one, and the theatre, but I haven't, yeah. I've been asked to direct film a couple of times, but it's, it's once again, it's like, that is a big... I directed a, a short film, a half-hour film. I would, the advice I was given, sit down a lot. <laughs> <laughs> Robert Altman told me that. <laughs> Just sit down a lot. Um, be prepared, absolutely be prepared. Mm. You have to watch. Um, watch, yes. But I it's think if, it, to fun. be, to literally give someone something active to do, it's spend money. Like go if you if you want more. We need to just literally. And I'm so guilty of this. But like, if you hear about a film that's made by a woman, go and see it, regardless of whether you're interested or not, so that it makes some money. Because mm -hmm. it's only money that's yeah. going to change. Mm -hmm. yeah. And Ava DuVernay was saying so interestingly about the year that she was offered Selma, and she was in the Sundance Institute with um, another guy, and they spent the whole year doing all these festivals together, and they were all kind of you know, and the films were equally as successful and equally well reviewed. And at the end of the year, she was like, oh, "I've been given this money to make this film." Selma and her friend was like, yeah, me too. I'm making Jurassic Park. <laughs> you know? And it was like, <laughs> yeah. You know, you yeah. did a, a film with a pioneering woman director, Liliana Cavani of The Night Porter, very um, controversial film. Mm. Did you think at that point this was the beginning of a new era for women? And do you look back and say, well, it wasn't? Well, no, I think it's because what we've been saying about women, that really is a choice. Women, women you know, women, women do an awful lot of things. They have an awful lot of jobs to do in life. Mm. and uh, there's not that much time in a day to, to be able to do all these jobs. And we, we well know that we are the ones that do the mothering. You know, men are very good at it, but, they, they, but they've got other things to do, and they always have had other things to do. And we know in the end, we're going to be doing the mothering jobs and keeping the sort of three meals on the table and this, that, and the mm. other. So it's, it's, for me, it's a question of choice. Liliana Cavani, she wanted more than anything to work and to be directing pictures, mm. and that's what she did. And she carried on all her life doing that because that's what she wanted, and she made it happen. Mm. So if a woman is determined, she will get what she wants because we are very determined 
determined creatures. And if we and if we have a little bit of little bit of talent as well with that determination, that's what we will do. But there will be a moment when we want to be mothers too. We want to look after our babies. Mm -hmm. We or, want to take time. But off. Or there will be a moment where you say, I want. I would love the opportunity to work with a bigger budget. <laughs> mm -hmm. You know, it's interesting, mm -hmm. and we've, we've all made them. Mm -hmm. Those really low budget gems of pictures mm. which you wouldn't make with any other people. But it's it's like, you know, say I'm Australian and I love, I, you know, run a theatre company there. I am so proud of the cultural product that, that is made there and is exported but consumed there. But is it the only country in which I wish to work? No. It's like women want to work with different side, you want to exercise different muscles and it's it's that opportunity which is not always afforded. Um, speaking of exercising different muscles, you said you'd play Bob Dylan. Is there a male role uh, that you wish you could have played? I'd love to play Hamlet. Has mm. been played, but I think Sarah mm. Bernhardt played Hamlet. Mm. Yes. yes, and then someone else, Fiona Shaw. Yeah, I think Fiona Shaw yeah. did what? Did she do she Hamlet? Do a... She did Richard II and... I did do Maybe. Prospero. Yes, <laughs> yes. <laughs> right. They're all Shakespeare um, roles. But, uh, oh, there's always male roles I want to play. I'm like, so annoyed when I watch movies and go, that could have been played by a woman, and that could have been played by a woman. There's nothing to stop that being a woman. And it's driven me crazy in my career to watch wonderful actresses, mm. really their careers kind of diminish and disappear, and mediocre actors carry mm. on, mm -hmm. male Sarah actors. Bullock is doing that now. It's Sarah so Bullock annoying. Is saying, I'll do it Just in change the name is all you need to do, you know. That's all you need to do. And all this crap about, oh, I can't, you know, oh, I can't write roles for women, I just don't understand them. It's like, if you don't have to. Yeah, I had, I had that opportunity with the, with the director and I was saying, this is a really interesting script and it would stop it being formulaic if you had a woman playing mm. one of that team. And, and they're thinking, yeah, we have to rewrite it. And I said, you don't have to yeah, change yeah. the dialogue. Absolutely, mm. of course not. You know, and I think that's the thing is they have to write it with a female sense. What is a Why? female sensibility? I mean, yeah, exactly. like, how diverse are the films that Those, we're, yeah. you know, that Short -term we're When you did China Syndrome, that was the role written for a man. And you said, I'm going to play it. And it became a woman's role. Did they change it a lot? Uh, yeah, we did. We changed it a lot. Is there a male role you wish you could have played? No. Is there a role you wish you could have played that you didn't? <laughs> <laughs> I don't. I mean, I'm sure there's plenty I should have, but I no, I don't think of it that way very okay. much. It's just, yeah. it's just a waste of time. I yeah, think. absolutely. Anybody else? Yeah, what much. about Breed? Is there a role you go, God, I wish I could have played that part? Indiana Jones. Oh, that's interesting. <laughs> James Franco, Pineapple Express. <laughs> yeah, that's pretty much it. I just watched Pineapple Express actually again the other day. Yeah. Oh, so, yeah, so it's brilliant. Yeah, yeah, that would be James yeah. Franco. Oh, Do you have yeah. a favourite movie, not your own, that you like to watch over and over? My favourite movie would never be my own. <laughs> yeah. 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 One, One of my, my favourite um, movies the is, um, yeah. and it had a huge influence on me at high school and actually made me think I, I really want to be either an actor or a director was They Shoot Horses, Don't They? Mm. Oh, Oh, yes. I, I, I mean, yes. that performance of yours was, oh, it's, I mean, I will be on my deathbed mm. and I'll recall it. It was, yeah. Uh, is there an actor or actress, not around this table, that you would really love to work with? All of my answers Not are here. Not yeah. yeah. <laughs> Most of my answers would be involved with this table. <laughs> Jenna Rollins, I think. I was Jenna just going to say that Cassavetes. Yes. For me, Anna Magnani. Oh, yes. The goddess. Amazing. Of, of film acting for me. Charlotte. Monica Bitti. Mm. Yeah. I think I'd love to work with Tony Collette, to be honest. Mm. I'm yeah. a huge mm. fan mm. of Tony. I'd see I that. Just think yeah. she's so yeah. that. I just think she's she's so she's just very daring. And I just admire her choices and I admire her intensity and her vulnerability and yeah, I just think she's a cracker. Mm. An absolute yeah, cracker. She's a cracker. Mm. Yeah. And the um, yeah. Sorry, the other one, I think yes. did I hear you were gonna play Catherine Hepburn? I have played that. Yeah, it's very good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Lucille Ball, we're yeah. doing yeah. something with Lucille Ball. Oh, with Lucille Ball. One of my all time favorites. Yes. Oh, she's wow. fantastic. Mm -hmm. Are you playing Lucille Ball? But that's, the, that's the plan. Huh. <gasps> Unless they change Carrie, their mind. Carrie, how about you? I genuinely reference everyone around this table all the time when I'm asked mm. this because I've, I've said this so many times. I feel like, you know, everyone around this table makes such bold choices and that's something I'm always nervous that I'm passive and I've, mm. I'm so, so I take inspiration from every single person. Any one in the past? Marion Cotillard, I've always wanted oh. to. Mm. But I, I also feel like I don't want to be on the same screen as her. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. Everything just feels so real yeah, and there's no, there's Great. nothing, she's not doing anything, mm. she's not acting. It's so, and I would feel like you could see through, you know, Jane, whatever it's doing. You? 
I, the two people I would have said I did work with, you know, Vanessa Redgrave yeah. mm. and Meryl. Meryl did right. her yeah. first movie in Julia. Julia, yeah. right. Yeah. Well, make it happen. Mm -hmm. I'd like to thank all of you really so much for just a wonderful roundtable. I so appreciate it. Thank, thank you. you very, very much. Thank, thank you. you. And you thank managed you. to Thanks. get us all to at least mention yeah. our film. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs>